So what's the pump selection guide from ASHRAE and HI? HI and ASHRAE both have some comments. Best practice, as you see from HI, which everybody belongs to, is pretty much around B, and they would caution you to go a little left to B. That's kind of what they tell you, and there's some reasons for it. You can dig a little deeper if you like, just going to quote what HI does. Uh, here's the best efficiency pump curve idea. This one's 83 and a half. Let's talk about efficiency islands real quick. We mentioned it. Everything in yellow there would have an efficiency island equal to 83 points or higher. Jumping on down to the green, everything in the green would have an efficiency island equal to what? 80% higher. So the point would be, we'd be nice if we could take that 80% green island and make it bigger, our electric bill would go down. That's simple. If we could take that green efficiency island, 80 points, and make it bigger, your electric bill would go down. That's simple. And this is what we're after. In other words, we're not going to run that 83.5% beat pump. Even if you picked your pump there, it's not going to run there. It may run there 1% of the time, but it's not going to run there. It's going to be moving back and forth. That's the whole issue. What does ASHRAE recommend? This is out of 2012 handbook. You can go check me out if you like. It can subject to change, but that's what's in there right now. They're basically saying what? You've got the guideline there, and they're still preaching to the left of beep. The reason they're still preaching to the left of beep is possibly, possibly in the turbulent region. I got red might be important to you. If you know your pump head precisely and you're tight on it, you can go to right of beep, no big deal. But if you don't know that, if you're gambling a little bit on it, or you're not sure it's right, or you're not sure it's going to be installed exactly the way you laid it out, then ASHRAE is still telling you go left to beep so you don't get in a turbulent area. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. So here's kind of a summation that Pleasant's company is going to make this statement to you. If you want to pick a pump to the right of beep, you make sure you got the right pump head loss calculation. You make sure it went in the way you designed it. You make sure you got the equipment you specified. You make sure you got the pressure drops that you originally picked on the, on the equipment. And you don't have a lot of overhead. You haven't got a lot of safety factor. If you're not going to do that, pick to the left. To the right of beep, if everything's perfect, might give you slightly more efficiency as you cross these efficiency islands. It might give you a little bit higher if you don't fall off the curb because you're slightly overheaded. The key thing again is ASHRAE 90.1-2010 is telling you to do a detailed pump and let's call it calculation. But did you put a safety factor? How much? Are you overheading? Did you get the same equipment? Did it piping go in exactly the way you laid it out? Same number of T's, same number of elbows, same pipe size. Or did somebody change something? I can't answer those questions. You're going to have to answer them. But we're going to caution you because we see people getting in trouble. Way overheaded pumps, pick to the right, it's going, to, it's going to be trouble. And I don't know how we deal with that issue other than making sure you understand it. So here's again uh, from 2012 ASHRAE Handbook, and you see beep, and they're still steering you to pick slightly to the left when you can, simply because the stay out of turbulent areas. Because if you fall off that pump curve, the pumps get cavitated and going to tear them up. You're going to have to go back and throttle a valve to get it back on the curve. And what are you doing energy-wise now if you're throttling a valve? I mean, you just kill the whole thing. You can't really get away with it. So efficiency island low profiles, I think you kind of get the message of where we're headed with this. But here we go. I got a system curve crossing over a pump curve, that little blue line. That's where it's going to run. Always. It's going to be at that point. First law of thermo, energy in, which is the pump curve, energy out, which is the system curve, where they cross is going to be equal in energy. And you can't change that. You can't specify that on the drawing. That's what's going to happen in the real world. And that's where we got to look at the efficiency of the pump and see what's happening. So efficiency islands, we start looking at a little bit. What we're seeing is a lot of modern pumps out there, a lot of pump efficiencies out there, a lot of people trying, which is the right thing to be doing to improve the pump efficiency. What well, it's not all about just looking at that beep anymore. We need to look at that island a little bit. And we got to define an island. So here's an island for you. And I'll flip through a couple, several of these slides pretty quick. I think you already got the concept. We need to look more than just beep. There needs to be an envelope or some definition of an efficiency island. And we need to match it up to the real world, a constant head, and making sure the pump head loss calculations are correct to get the true operating cost of our pump. That's what we're after. So here's a definition. You see this particular one. I think everything inside of that is 81% efficiency or higher. Here's a little little different picture on what it is, and you kind of see this various ones you can have. You can pick the one. This is 81% as well. Here's a little bigger picture of it. Still the same slide. 81% or higher in that efficiency island. 
In other words, if we could keep a system curve bouncing between those two lines on the island, we would never get below an efficiency of 81 points. And we cannot keep a pump at 86% beep all the time. It's impossible. cannot be done. So what would be your goal? Obviously, if you were a pump designer building pumps, you want that island to be as wide and as deep as you can get. But it's going to vary by pump vendors, going to vary by models in the same pump line. You, know, you can get individual pump you want to pick. There's going to be a bunch of different models you got to look at to decide which one is best based on your low profile, based on your low profile. That's the key. So let's go back to this uh, two-way valve idea, this shifting system curve try to bring these pieces together. So you see we just talked about the efficiency island bit. Now we're back to the system curve and you see how it's shifting back and forth? So you begin to get the idea if my system curve is shifting back and forth with a system curve area, wouldn't it be nice to make sure that area, as we've shown in this slide, has the highest overall average efficiency we can get? And that's where we think we got to go with modern pump selections. 